the desert landscape of Wadi Rum in southern Jordan. This is one of the most arid regions in the world. Water here is in extremely short supply. Sometimes it has to be delivered from far away. Bedouin Salman Al Mizna has just loaded up with fresh water. Today, he's taking it to a drilling station in the middle of the desert. The drilling engineers depend on Salman's deliveries. However, it shouldn't be long before fossil groundwater is pumped out from underneath the desert. But to get at this water deep inside the earth, they'll have to drill down at least 500 meters. By exploiting these non-renewable stocks of water, they hope to alleviate the crisis that has been persisting for decades. For there is an acute shortage of water in Jordan's cities. Amman, the Jordanian capital. When the country achieved independence in 1946, the city had a population of around 50,000. Nowadays, more than two million people live in Greater Amman and their number is rising fast. To keep them supplied with water every year, the country has been consuming water faster than it can be regenerated naturally. We abstract around 500 cubic meters from groundwater, so almost double the sea field. Not because we want to abstract more water, because we need the problem of overusing the meagre water supplies isn't just confined to the Kingdom of Jordan. About 200 kilometers northwest of Amman is the Sea of Galilee, one of Israel's main sources of water. In many years, more water is pumped off than can be replenished by natural influx into the lake. The water level is getting dangerously low. Pollution and salinization are the result. Each year, Israel consumes about 1.7 billion cubic meters of water. About half of this is pumped into agriculture. The main crops in this region, such as bananas, are water intensive. It takes about 800 liters of water to produce just a single kilogram of bananas. 300 kilometers to the south is the Dead Sea. Because less and less fresh water is flowing into it, the water level here is also sinking rapidly at a rate of one meter per year. The receding shoreline is now so far away that many swimmers have to use transport to get to the water. The falling water level has also resulted in deep craters. For safety reasons, large stretches of the shore have been declared off limits. This area was once home to a large campsite. Israeli Simon Chokran used to work as an attendant here. These holes, up to 30 meters deep, are also one of the consequences of the falling water level. They're created when underground layers of salt dissolve, the cavities subside, and the earth caves in. That's the, the one when uh, the girl falls down. And the same day, the place, it's closed. The wall between Israel and the Palestinian territories. On the Palestinian side, deep below the barren hills of West Jordan, are important groundwater reservoirs. But exactly how this water is to be shared remains a contentious issue. Israel has secured access to the lion's share of this water by means of a network of fortified pumping stations. In the meantime, the Palestinians' traditional sources are drying up owing to the diminishing water level. The Palestinians in Jericho and in other cities, uh, even they don't find drinking water, not only agricultural water. And we are agricultural community. Without water, no development in Palestine. In some cases, the tense political situation causes dramatic repercussions on the environment. The Kidron Valley, east of Jerusalem, 
Every year, some 10 million cubic meters of untreated sewage are discharged into the valley. Because the Israeli and Palestinian authorities can't agree, this problem has never been solved. Hydrologist Tino Rodiger says that the groundwater supplies are in jeopardy. As it flows away, this filthy, putrid water seeps into the ground. It contaminates the little groundwater there is here and ruins its quality. Hydrologists Tino Rodiger and Christian Siebert aim to systematically map the groundwater resources in the region. They intend to find out how the stocks of water are formed and develop over time. What we're attempting to do is to map the aquifer in this catchment area accurately enough to determine its dynamics and hence the quantity of water here. And of course, that'll hopefully benefit the water supply for the surrounding region. The German researchers are working hand in hand with scientists from Israel, Palestine and Jordan. Their goal is to ascertain how the limited resources can best be utilized. They're developing a management system, which they hope can be used for other regions suffering from drought. For example, many fields could also be irrigated with treated wastewater. At this pilot plant near Amman, Various ways of purifying sewage in small decentralized treatment plants are being tested. I think decentralized systems can make a great contribution to replenishing the regional hydrological cycle. We estimate that about 20% of the entire water balance could be returned to the region's hydrological cycle by reusing sewage and wastewater. Realizing just how precious water is and the different ways in which it can be used is of key importance. After all, if water were used efficiently and economically, there would be enough for everyone.